Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the What Did He Say Podcast Special Edition. Dun, 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 dun. If you like conspiracy, if you like mm. to talk politics, if you like to hear Chingo Bling ranting like a 41-year-old talking about, it's all about strategy and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Red Pill Tamales. Uh, this is episode number... Ocho. Episode number eight. Uh, I am your host, Chingo Bling. We have producer Rob in the building, and we have... Mighty Soul. That's what's up. Also, Joe's out there over there editing some stuff. So make sure you subscribe to all of our social media. And a quick shout out to Handy Works. They're sponsoring this episode. Handy, H A N D I, Works, W E R X. It's an app. It's like Uber for a handyman. You know, check it out. If you need somebody to come and, you know, put some gutters up or fix a floor, maybe you swung a kettlebell too hard and you broke the floor. I don't know what you do at your house, but hit up Handy Works and they will uh, see if they can send a handyman. Over to you. I think it's a great app. I use it. I love it. Chingo yes. the other day was like, "How uh, how handy are you?" I was like, "I'm kind of handy." He's like, can you put up these security lights? I was like, "Yeah." No, I was like, "Man, sure can. this light over here has a solar panel on it, and it's gone out." Ever since we had some paint work done over here, I think Los Vatos they uh, unhooked the wire or something. Sepa la madre. Uh, Versace Mariachi is out right now, and December 10th we will be in San Antonio for an album release party. The album features Pitbull, uh, Paul Wall. Uh, Fifth War Weeby, rest in peace, and so many, so many more. And we appreciate the love. Sass. So let's talk about Patreon. Yeah, so this podcast has, has I think, definitely done more than I thought it was going to do in two weeks. Uh, it's reached more people than I thought it was going to reach. Blowing up, it, yeah. It really is. And I, at, when I reached out to you initially just to be like, have you thought about pursuing this in a way that you're going to do this uh, semi-regularly to regularly about how you feel about things and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, let's chat. And this podcast gave us an opportunity to work together again mm -hmm. and reach mm -hmm. a whole new demographic. Yeah. A very vocal demographic. So back when we, it was just the What Did He Said podcast. And back when I was a Democrat, uh, <laughs> I had no idea Rob was Mr. Closet Republican. Uh, I just heard him talking down on Beto O'Rourke a couple times when I was supposed to go meet up with Beto O'Rourke before I knew he was going to take guns away. And Rob was like, hmm, what do you think about that guy having a nickname like Beto? And I was like, I don't know. Maybe he's from the barrio, homie. You never seen uh, Blood In, Blood Out and American Me? It was always a white boy in the hood. And sometimes we gave them nicknames. You know, look at Tax Collector. This is Beto. And even Mighty Soul. I have to give Mighty Soul some credit because I don't do that enough. She was like, whoa, she was well, shocked with that one. I was like, huh? I was like what, what is he giving me credit He's for? like, where's this going? <laughs> what, do you, like, what do you want? Feels like a setup. Get get us. You know what I want. Yeah. Ooh -hoo -hoo. I'm a red blooded American male. You know what I want. I'm an alpha male. Yeah. yeah. He's talking about them sweet walls. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> This is a Patreon. Uh, there will also be uh, other tiers besides the five dollars tier. If you're trying to see what's going on in the household, we can put that the webcam. That is called fans only, baby. Uh, we can put the webcams up. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Rob, how do I make my mic go down? So I feel like uh, the thicker part. That this, part right there. So the credit yeah. I want to give Mighty Soil is, you know, back when uh, I was just really into all this, you know, politics stuff. Like you know, during quarantine and everything, and we're just discussing like, man. Do you see, what do you think about this defund the police? When we were doing cafecito time, we were going live every day. I remember. Mm -hmm. Then we fell off. And, um, you know, Marisol will mention like, huh, maybe, um, you have, who knows, babe, maybe that'll be like one of your things where, you know, you might, you might open up a whole another lane and, and get to discuss things that you obviously care about, that you feel a civic duty to keep the discussion going instead of keeping it one-sided, you know, where you have... Jalo Guzamo, Eva Mendez, or what's her name? Eva Longoria and them. Yeah. Just like, it's all about the Democrats, guys. The Democratic Party. Do not even look over there at the Republicans. Mm. Don't even think about going over there. So, um, so bringing it back to the Patreon, um, I mean, people seem like they're down, like they want to keep it going. Obviously, I was like, hey, man, let's just do a dozen uh, episodes to test it. You know, dozens. Like, a like hot tamales. dozen. A hot, a dozen. hot ass dozen. Red pill tamales. They're spicy as fuck. Each season should be a dozen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, yeah. So yeah. we're thinking about getting on Patreon and letting you guys support. And if you guys want to keep it going, then uh, we're thinking, what are we thinking, Rob? We're thinking about having basically the founding fathers and mothers of the podcast in order to keep the message going to where the show goes on for those that, let's just say, want to tune in and can't quite, you know, support or they've maybe really hit hard times and they're suffering or struggling right now and can't afford to do the five dollar uh, patreon you know paywall that's fine but those that can and want to be a founding father of the show 
we'll get the episode, the initial one that everybody can find on iTunes, Spotify, wherever, and then a bonus one on top of that. That's just for them. That's just for you mm -hmm. on a private RSS feed that you can get on whatever app you listen to your podcast. So you get twice as many episodes. You get twice as many episodes to start, and then of course, as you know, demand ramps up, we'll uh, we'll approach that when we get to it. But you also get to be a part of the show, so almost to an extent of being like a contributor or a producer of sorts, because you'll be able to chime in directly, basically, with Chingo. Through the Patreon app, uh, send messages, send, we'll be able to take in testimonials or videos or uh, calls and play them on the podcast and answer questions and put them on social media and have the discussion, you know, continue to go, go on and grow bigger. Yeah. So let us know, hit us with your feedback. If that's something you want to see happen, if you want to continue to tune in, if you want the show to go on and you love this type of discussion, I know we're not like two sided, you know, but we're offering a whole other perspective than the mainstream media. The mainstream media, as we talked last episode, CNN and them are having meetings saying, hey, make sure people don't know that Trump and them are still fighting this thing and that the electoral people haven't, haven't even ruled it out on all their states. Like, they haven't turned in their vote. Yeah, nothing's been certified yet. Yeah, nothing's been certified. I know the media likes to say president-elect and all that. So you might be hearing this type of talk for the first time, but uh, this is a kind of important stuff, you know, the red pill. This includes getting conversations with people, you know, let's just say of power uh, on the show and uh, having those conversations with people on both sides, but also those that already have a, a pretty big position in, in power right now as far as politics goes. And what, what was the guy's name? Is it Wesley Hunt? Wesley Hunt, yeah. I heard Wesley Hunt, and I've seen his uh, signs on yards in certain neighborhoods. Well, he was running for Congress, mm -hmm. and he didn't get it, right? Barely lost, yeah. Okay. Mm. Who knows if some of these recounts, I don't know if they're going to dig that deep, mm -hmm. but... um. I heard him on Rogan, and he was talking about how Houston is a human trafficking capital of the U.S., mm -hmm. including kids. And that has a lot to do with the border, I'm sure, like what Trump was trying to say, which is, we don't know what's going on down there. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know if terrorists, fentanyl, drugs, cartels, coyotes. They clowned him when he said coyote. But uh, it'd be cool to get Wesley up here. Yeah, even Dan Crenshaw himself, you know, mm -hmm. he's local. Mm -hmm. He's he's got an office here in town, mm -hmm. and if he can, if he can't come in, maybe like I said, we can go to his office and set up the the studio and the cameras there, and, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what the Patreon also goes towards is towards experiences like that to bring back to the listeners. And mm -hmm. you guys could even help provide the pandulce that we will take to these uh, interviews and meetings. But I don't want to overpromise too much. But you know, pandulce, I'm pretty sure we can make happen. You know, somebody wants some pan dulce right now. I mean, Marisol just said, I oh, that's really true. wanted pan dulce bad, y'all, like for a hot minute. I don't know how long it's been. And then finally. What's this right here? Is that her apparel? Is that her apparel? Okay. Your for Latina YSL, you know, the Leisure Remix Collection. All up on In the In case mic. you missed it. <laughs> her apparel, TX .com. It's so, so funny because I told Joe, I was like, uh, Joe, why is my merch not popping up on my vlogs? And he's like, oh, yeah, I forgot. So we tried to do this voiceover today and it sounded awful. I don't know what was happening on the phone. I sounded like. Hey, check this out, y'all. This old. It sounded like I was uh, the guy from. You Magic sounded like Michael Watts. No, I really do sound like a man when I wake up in the morning. Hey, though. I ain't gonna lie. Good morning, baby. Just saying. Anyway, okay. So one thing I do want to uh, mention right now, after you guys were talking about mm -hmm. this, uh, you know, the feedback has been great. I get. Um, Obviously, I was getting a lot of shitty DMs for a hot minute, you know what I'm saying? But right now, a lot of the, I guess maybe because Chingo gets so many DMs and he doesn't reply, but they know that I do. Um, so so I, they got tired of cussing me out. So no, 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 no. These are out. the good ones. Oh, these okay. are good comments. Um, so they'll say, I sent this to Chingo, but I, I know that he gets a lot. So, and I'll tell him which ones they are. But everybody, um, seem, a lot of them have been a thank you versus negative. Uh, an another person was like, I didn't vote that way, you know what I'm saying? But this knowledge is insane because I, I didn't know any of it. And, you know, it's just like, and it made me realize that I should probably have done better research before I make a choice for anything, any type of politician, but moving forward, you know what I'm saying? So um, the feedback has been great. I've even get people like DMing me um, different things to go look at that mm. they found, like they're going down this rabbit hole too. So I think it's really cool. You know what I'm saying? That um, the response is great. And I, at first, at first, when Chinga would go to bed, he's like, eh, I don't know about this shit. And he's like, you know, I don't know about this. Motherfuckers uh, don't want to yeah, listen. Yeah, I was like, no. I said, they, they love their identity politics and they yeah. just want to. They just want like a person of color as VP, and yeah, that's good enough for me. 
And so I had told him, I said, no, I, I said, I know that it seems like there's a shitload of bad comments, but I feel like there has been more good comments than bad. And, and most of them have been like respectful in the sense of a more of a thank you for doing this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And even though people may not, and like like you we've said plenty of times on here no one's trying to sway you to vote anyway no one's trying to make you become a republican republican but the fact that you're open-minded to hear these episodes says a lot about a person to me mm -hmm. because i listen to everything also regardless if i don't agree with it i still listen to it you know what i'm saying but um i feel like um you guys have started something very good. And I told him, I said, you have to keep it going. I said, you know, it's great for us to have someone who can educate us. That's our people, even though others think you sold them out. You know, um, it's great to have uh, another Hispanic who sees things this way. And, you know, especially for the more, you know, I think, I think Chingo's a little bit more on um, in the hood type person. So I think that you kind of like can bring that energy to towards making it known like, Hey, just because check you this out, Pimpin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's some crash dummy shit going yeah, on. Exactly. It, it's some fuck shit called identity politics. That's a big one. And I'm not saying that our listeners are dumb at all. No, I'm no just means. saying, you know, sometimes you're when you listen to shit, it's like, okay, can you say that in layman's terms? I had no idea what you just right. said with your in sign language. This is like a huge vocabulary word. It's like, I have no idea what you just say with your, Damn big ass vocab. Now I have to go fucking get a dictionary to to you know to Basically, know what you were talking about. Let me clarify Marisol's compliment to me. She's saying <laughs> I got street cred and I'm persuasive. You know what I'm saying? She's saying I got a whole bunch of credibility oh, there you go. and and I know how to communicate. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And you were kind of mm -hmm. saying that actually last episode about what, like when you started music, like you and Lucky, and how there was a different, there was a divide on how you came into the game and what you did and the, the grill thing or the skin, you know, because of the well, skin. Well, in, in terms, in terms of, um, I think the way it came up last episode, it was like you noticed a lot of people saying, "Yeah, these Texas fools are whitewashed. These right. Texas fools hate their own. These Texas fools are like those Cubans, you know. These Texas fools been Republican, blah 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 blah." Which isn't true. I think it's a huge generalization. Yes, Texas is a red state, but it's due mostly to the 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 country area, the rural. Mm -hmm. Once you get out of the Democrat-run city, you know the cities that flood, and then we gather all this money, and then we don't know where the money and then it went. goes missing. It goes missing, and then it floods again. They still ain't fixed that. So that part is mostly Democrat. It's like these little blue pockets, Austin. Is, is damn near San Francisco. Yeah. And then I'm mad that we didn't go to the gala that, that we got invited to because um, I guess you had to donate a large amount for you to be invited to this gala. We were out of town. But when I found out for the Harvey about, money, for the, when oh. I found out what happened for the Harvey money, like it wasn't oh. really used. I was like, fuck, I really should have gone. I, I would have really been asking some because, you know, how I am. Pete. Yeah, I'll start ask, I'll start making friends with people and I'll get I'm like, boy, did you know, blah, 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 blah. So about let's this? so let's touch on that. Security, real quick. please uh, yes. escort that lady. Yeah. Out. So we donated like twenty five grand. Mm -hmm. Right. And half of that, I believe, was from um, fans. Yeah. So we matched whatever the um, fans raised. Mm -hmm. So what we did is. We weren't even in Houston. We were stuck. We were in Dallas. And, um, you know, we visited some shelters out there where some of the people were set up. And we were just trying to be helpful And as we were out of the city. So uh, my management at the time, Rich, he was like, hey, um, the mayor set up a, a link. It's for the Red Cross. Uh, J.J. Watt also gave all that money there. So if you want, just use that one. Right. Because I didn't want to be the one to be like, all right, um, give me a list of families and I'm going to give a thousand dollars. I probably should have did that. But instead, we just say, hey, we don't want to be holding this bag. We're just going to hand it up forward. Because you know what happens. Oh, they probably I don't want to get blamed it. for yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to get totally. blamed for shit. I fuck around, be wearing some Jordans. and like, oh, it's Pinche Harvey Jordans, homie. <laughs> so we gave it to them. And obviously the Red Cross, I mean, it is what it is. They, they Most of that money goes to overhead and staffing right. and none of it. Another thing uh, Michael Berry mentions is that sometimes in places like a Houston that gets hit by uh, like a hurricane or something like a really bad crisis, these big uh, nonprofits, that should be one of the hashtag Chingo warned y'all, like a red pill. So these nonprofits, what they do is they'll collect all this money off the backs of the local Gulf Coast communities that get hit. And then they just spend it elsewhere and and they just do whatever with it. And it doesn't necessarily all trickle back mm -hmm. here. It just gets funneled 
rewashed, used for other stuff, you know, ad- admin fees and this and that, and the CEO and whoop de whoop. And next thing you know, you still flooding. And um, <laughs> but the, I'm the seller. But I'm the, the seller. The high higher end person too. The high at the top has this uh, you know business credit card and will use these business credit cards to go on trips and different things like that and consider them to be a business thing that they were doing for the business and it's really not true and then they get busted right and then they get fired right but now all that money was used and then i think the united way has mm. also had a whole bunch of cases mm. so basically now i'm probably gonna say none because i'll get in trouble about i interpreted at that meeting yeah, so oh. the, so the nonprofits, are, and that's a good topic. That's actually a good topic to mm-hmm. to. I'm gonna write it down right now as a future one to maybe get somebody in here to talk about it with us because there's a lot of things with, and we're not gonna go into Black Lives Matter, but the BLM, mm-hmm. n- like the organization itself versus other like subsidiaries of it, which are like BLM Network or Enterprise, are are separate from from BLM, the original like founded organization, which isn't if I'm, as long as I'm not mistaken, isn't a 5013C yet. So they're like taxes aren't public. Uh, there's a lot of you know like where's the money kind of thing, and it's really strange. You know Wait, what's the address? Yeah, yeah. that's why they didn't office? register it that way. They knew what they were yeah. doing. It's been years too, though. It's been years, um, and it's just again you say this and you feel like oh, I'm saying a dirty word, but mm-hmm. it's a bummer for those people that are giving a lot of money, thinking mm-hmm. it's going to a mm-hmm. great cause. Oh yeah, and TikTok is full of little kids and white girls and all kinds of little. All know, your haters, they all have the hashtag BLM in, most in their of comments. them. Yeah, they'll have like the little fist um, in the icon and. I first noticed that with my um my twelve year old. She's like, "Oh hey dad, check out this uh this girl Charlie. She dances on there." Blah blah blah. And I'm looking at it. I was like, "Hmm. So why does the white girl got this BLM fist?" It's like, "Well, dad, you know, Black Lives Matter, and you know they all have it." And I was like, "Oh well, maybe it's like a trend, or you know, it's it's it was like probably during the the height of the George Floyd tragedy where it's like." Everybody just felt like they wanted to help. And, and it was quarantine, COVID, lockdown. So people were just like, man, it's the most I could do. Yeah. It's changed my profile. So I'm sure it came from a good place, you know, putting a link in bio. So 4th of July, when we took our 4th of July pictures w- with the stars and stripes, you know, head to toe, red, white, and blue. Looking hey, like, looking like, bitch. Looking Never. like, you know what I'm saying, America. We was looking like Dipset. Mm. All of us, little kids and shit, everybody, come on. We should have had more flags. <laughs> well, they gave us flack. We took a picture in the backyard. They were just like, this should be a day that we should reflect as to how America could be better. And I was looking at it like they took the bait because I was trying to see how many, how anti-American some of the people that follow me are. Mm-hmm. They're not America first. They don't back the police. They don't support the troops. And they're just, they subscribe to this idea that... um America is fundamentally evil to the core. Everything is racist. Race, 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 race. And guess what we saw today? Mm, tell me. We left um, We left El Bolillo Bakery, mm-hmm. I-45 and Wayside. Marisol, you know what neighborhood is over there, right? Wayside, are you familiar? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ma- what is it? Uh, I'm familiar with the area. I don't know the neighborhood. Okay, well, you got Magnolia, mm. all the Southeast, Edo, East End. Wayside. If you look under Wayside, they painted the freeway up under the freeway, like colorful, like papel picado type of shit to let you know this the barrio. It's like Calle Ocho to Miami. So we pull out of El Bolillo. Obviously, it's like traffic time. All the workers, people in trucks. It's, it's all raza right there. It's, it's, it's congested. Well, you got two white people begging and they have their sign and it says un dólar por favor oh my in gosh. Spanish. So, of course, I had to tell my, my daughter. I said, hey, baby, you know how people try to say that um, that your skin color is going to affect, you know, like if you're darker skin, that's bad. You're going to, you know, you're going to be a victim of racism. And basically America is set up on race and class. And it, if you're darker, you're at the bottom. They hold you down. I was like, you, you're familiar with that, right? I was like, yeah, she was like, yeah, 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 whatever. You know, because we talk about stuff like that. And I say, isn't it ironic that everybody that's in these cars at this light, obviously has enough money to probably be coming from work, got gas, they own a car, they're probably headed to a home. But you got these two white folk who maybe just had a bad strategy in life. Maybe they're addicted to something. I don't know what made them be home. I don't know if they're really homeless. Maybe maybe they're just hustling. But I was like, how ironic is it that you have white people asking brown people for money in Espanol? 
So I was like, what does that tell you? That it's not a rule across the board. Like it's a bullshit excuse because there's exceptions to everything. Some of the poorest counties in America are white. Like the Appalachians, like um, out there, uh, where is that? Appalachians, Smoky Mountain, where is that? Montana? No, the Appalachians is over here. Like uh, I don't want to use the word like the mine, the coal miner folk. Yeah. I don't want to say like hillbillies and shit like that. But in the Appalachians, I mean, even back during MLK, uh, his I Have a Dream speech, I think right after they assassinated him, he had just made a speech where he shifted it from race to class. And he just basically was about to uh, organize like a poor people's march. And he was basically saying, hey, it's not just the, uh, the black man's plight. It, uh, it's poor people in America. You know what I'm saying? You know, there's some systemic things there. He, he, he was shifting it to, to class. Next thing you know, he went to Memphis and he was outside of the Lorraine Motel over there with Jesse Jackson. I'm not saying Jesse set him up. I'm not mm. saying Jesse was CIA like, like uh, Al Sharpton. I'm not saying he was a snitch. But somebody told him to come. Hey, man, let's get some fresh air, man. Come stand over here, right here by this tree. And choo, choo, choo. I'm just saying. Uh, speaking of that, you know what's funny is uh, yesterday I was trying to tell Chingo the story about. Any lights was it? Oh, we're good. Um, I was trying to tell him the story about. Um, I'd seen a post. It's it's a it's an account that I follow and I can't find it. But anyway, it was talking about basically how um, when the sperm is trying to like oh. reach. You know, so that you could. This is Patreon, can be, not OnlyFans. Know, <laughs> impregnate, etc. Um, you know, it takes several of them to get to you before you know one actually hatches. I guess if that's not the proper term, but you know what right? I mean. You huh? know, like it actually has to like to the egg. You yeah, mean? exactly. Yeah. So, anyway, um, so but the the caption of it was more like another reason that proves basically that we don't need men. What? <laughs> to get pregnant, right? To have babies. And, you know, I trust me, guys, if you follow me on social media, you know that I'm all about women empowerment. I'm about that 100%. But I kind of felt some kind of way about that. You know what? We've talked about this, Jingo and I, but I, now, I don't think it was you in here. So I'm glad you brought that up, actually, to kind of give more of your perspective on uh, the, uh, that movement, that really, really yeah, I think anti it's a little bit. I think it's too extreme for me. Like, um, because... I'm going to tell you a story. It's so funny. But but first, going back to what, uh, hold that, remember that thought, because I'd be forgetting shit. But um, going back to what you said, babe, how this person had that un dollar only, whatever. Por favor. Por favor. While I was searching for that account to show Chingo, I saw that, it's, check this out. He is, I'm not even sure what, um, if he's Vietnamese, Chinese, or what he is, but he goes by Dr. Mom, uh, Latina moms or something. Dr. Dr. Latina makeover Latina moms. Okay. That's what he goes by. So he's a plastic surgeon. Okay. Who legit knows fucking Spanish. Like, y aquí está la cinturita. Le voy a sacar gordito de aquí. And I was just like. Hey, he just got to learn cinturita. And, and <laughs> Genius. Yeah, right. This Gran guy. Pasa. His marketing. Le, vamos a poner un culo. Un culo aquí, pero tremendo culo. You know, the and he's La barriga like, and va he's, a ser culo. Yeah, so he basically he's like, quitamos gordito de aquí, se lo vamos a poner aquí en, en las pompis, pero se lo voy a hacer más redondas. And so he's going on about it. I'm impressed at how this Asian guy took the time to market to Latinas because they know how much Latinas love to get work done and they're all about the bbls and you know what i'm yeah. saying and i have no problem with whoever wants to get whatever that is your prerogative if you want to get your whole self done go ahead and get your whole self done i'm just saying it tripped me out that this guy took the time to learn the language he found his market and i mean he he just he just found his own niche but he he didn't even market it to his own people is that not true? Well, there's probably bigger demand with like Latina mom makeover. That probably has more demand than I had to start following him because it tripped me out. You know what I'm saying? I was like, bro, I'm gonna have to start following him to see his little mar marketing strategy here because I'm gonna have to see see what I can use for me because it trip it that's how trippy it was yeah. for me. And at the same time as I was looking for this stuff, I came across another lady who I follow who 
is a mother who's just that's all she does she's like a blogger an influencer but i started following her because um her daughter was born deaf and so i came across her page because um it went, the, her little video went viral when the first time they put the cochlear implant mm. her, i'm sorry her hearing aid to the baby and she heard her mom's voice mm. and she, the baby just made the cutest sound like it, it, it like the baby was so excited like she heard now like this whole time she probably only saw her mom move her mouth and now all of a sudden it was like wait a minute there's sound that comes out of my mom uh, when i first saw it i was like crying galore like someone had just died like i was it just touched my heart so i followed that lady well she did this series on her highlights right it's called um filtered filtered and unfiltered something like that so just to show you how much social media has influence on us women wanting to look a certain way oh. and we have stopped accepting so it was about filters it's about mm. filters about how we really should be okay with having freckles we should be okay with having you know a few play j cole you know what i'm saying smile. <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean just to have and so she showed you these apps that she'd used where she looked funky because you know she's being probably like you know no time to get ready because you're being a mom right. you're tired Lighting. you know she's a stay-at-home mom right. you didn't you didn't get glammed out and shit. yeah exactly so here she is looking like this and then she she says tap to take the filter off and then you tap, take it off and it's like a whole different person yeah it's like the filter changed her hairstyle even it, it's almost like a mask bro damn it, it's almost like a mask that you can adjust the intensity of it to where like if you were to use that app like it, it looked like you'd have a bunch of makeup and probably like blonde hair is that what rogan had posted a while back that his daughter Maybe. took a picture of him and it turned him into a girl you didn't see that picture there's a lot of them mm. there's yeah. apparently i don't know but it was a cool little thing that she did on there and mm. her caption was amazing because it said this hasn't ju this just didn't start with social media this has started and, and and there have been plenty of women that have done things uh, articles on this about how magazines Mental health. Have, have driven little girls to do a lot of things that they probably shouldn't just because they want to look like these girls on a magazine right and i Shit, know some of these dudes trying to look like kim kardashian mm -hmm. yes i mean look at the, look at um kylie jenner's makeup artist the main guy that she had at one point i don't know if he What's still his is name again um i remember you showing us the, those videos. i showed you that yeah. and i covered the face and i said guys you cannot see this isn't her body banging and i tricked y'all at first and you're like yeah everybody like, was like yeah Ooh. and then i took the I joe, took my joe hand was like oh she got a moose knuckle too <laughs> joe was excited he's like, like damn she'd get it and like, damn. this this Look at that guy puppy. just looks like kylie's She's smuggling body. a puppy right there like damn joe <laughs> yeah <laughs> you see joe in the background <laughs> joe's like, Joe's like, I'm a red-blooded American male. <laughs> Who <laughs> might happen to be a vegan. Yeah. Even though he eats a lot of soy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I just thought it was kind of trippy because um, I know that a lot of times the Democrats push this feminist agenda and they're not pushing it to empower, I feel. I think they're doing it more to battle, like... To, to divide, to probably. Di like, it's a cultural divide. Yeah, again, yeah. yeah exactly. Social Versus engineer really making it about why don't why haven't we found solutions to what women have supposed you know who struggle right so if, if there is a pay difference right why haven't they done anything about that teach so, them how to negotiate you know what i'm saying or yeah. or why hasn't there been more opportunities for women if there were really the if you're really trying to run this feminist campaign and i'm sure there's people on the on the left side who do really are honest because they're, they're on both sides shitty people are on both sides sure. you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying there mm -hmm. is no perfect you know what I'm saying? Uh, party. And we all know that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's they're politicians for a reason. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So obviously we know that. But um, this is almost just the same thing about us. Uh -huh. I want to tell you all uh, real quick because you're on the subject of the left, gender, so on and so forth. Manly men, Candace Owens. Biden, Rob mentioned to me, he's like, hey, Biden said he's one of the first things he wants to do. Check this out, Joe. One of the first things Biden wants to do is turn all public school gyms, locker rooms, restrooms into however you identify. Yeah. 
I played it yesterday on the podcast. I think Joe might have been sitting here, if not snoozing off back there, because he was so tired of working yeah, so hard. for sure. But I wanted to mention that the money sold, too, because we were talking about the exact same thing, and the whole Ellen Page thing, the actress. Did you see that? Yeah, oh, I, so I saw confusing. Ben Shapiro's thing on I it. haven't seen it yet. That is really good. He goes deep, good. and and he makes, like, yep. insane... Um, you both watched it already? Yes, he makes insane uh, really good. points. Very good points to where you're like, what rabbit hole did you go down? You, you, well, I mean, he, he, like... In that same I vein, I think Shingo brought up a really good point. Probably, if you haven't listened to all the episodes of the Red Pill Tamales, you either brought it up on the first or second one where you were at the mall with your daughter and you saw a mannequin, I think it was, and we were talking about this and you were like, isn't it ironic that the same side that's fighting for all these women's rights are, are, are welcoming more you know, of the guys basically taking over those roles and, and then for therefore taking over those roles of the women? Remember? Well, what I said was uh, we walked past a makeup place mighty soul said oh that's a dude yeah and i right, look yeah. i was like oh shit looks like a woman yeah. and i and i thought to myself it's super ironic that if there was ever going to be an industry that would be ran, run by women from top to bottom if they wanted to obviously you're going to have some talented men that they can be like fuck it we got to have this designer this makeup artist right. whatever but they could have dominated the beauty and makeup i don't know if maybe they just got off to a bad start and never really got in there all the way but i mean shit there's no excuse because kylie jenner just whipped up her own shit from scratch but you have all the jeffree stars which obviously he's talented and there's a reason why he controls such a large piece of the pie of market share right but it to me it seems like in an effort to be progressive and open-minded and accepting and everything women fuck themselves out of jobs in other words all the it's not but i don't know if it's a trend but it's like it's all dudes modeling doing the collabs i mean you have females you know i love sadae is doing something with this makeup person or whatever they getting flown out and shit but half of them things got to be like dudes putting on makeup like what's the other youtuber conspiracy little guy that uh supposedly said some shane. weird shane, oh, Daw- shane, shane dawson even weird guy he even got a bag from the beauty industry because he collabed with Jeffree Star and they yeah. did a whole fucking release and I'm like well, what happened to the women in this shit like who's buying all this makeup women yeah I mean I'm sure it's dudes buying it too but it's like women are giving their money to uh to this industry where it's, it's supposed to be women dominated and it's, it's not not nah. it doesn't seem like it I honestly okay real quick going back to the restroom thing let me tell you something that's funny this is and, and this is just to show you guys that um I, we didn't, or me, I'm going to speak for myself. There were, I never voted this way because I remember we were out of town somewhere and I saw, I think it was like at the airport or at the subway somewhere where I saw oh, yeah. the restroom where they had already a, a gender neutral restroom. And I posted it and I said, it looks like America is finally becoming more open-minded. Well, somebody who I, I worked with made the comment and said, That's disgusting. How dare you be okay with that? How would you feel if your children were in there using the restroom and hear this so-called gender, you know, this person who's transgender walks in, but they're really not transgender and they're just going in there because son mañosos. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God, this bitch is so close-minded. You know what I'm saying? I was like, ew. I'm like, I'm not going to let her see my stuff anymore because I can't deal with close-minded people. Later on, when I thought about it, as I educated myself more, I was like, holy shit, that's true. Mm. What if, right? Like Ben Shapiro said, what if you're in a locker room at the gym and you're just changing because women, if you know that if you go to 24 hour fitness, there's women walking around like in their chanclas naked getting changed. You know what I'm saying? You're just, you're just kind of walking by like, I don't, I don't need to see all that. You know what I'm saying? So you know, if there's a man that walks in there who now identifies as a female, but maybe they're just doing it to be able to walk in there, how will we know as women? That was my perspective the whole time. You know, and I got people always talk shit about it, but that's where, like, I, I love that you were like, oh man, that person was so close minded. You know, let's open our minds. I, I love to be that kind of a progressive person as well, optimistic, so super nice, mm-hmm. right to everybody, welcoming. Benefit of the doubt, yeah. But if, yeah, benefit of the doubt for sure. But at the same time, with stuff like that, there's just there's a really hard line in the sand, especially when you have kids. Like I would imagine, most people would agree with us. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't have kids. I mean, I I had I had Mickey, but to me, I just kind of felt like, well, I take Mickey to the restroom. Ain't nobody going to the restroom by themselves till this day. 
like Mickey just started going to the restroom like by oh, herself. Hell yeah. You know what For I'm saying? Sure. To where it's like, can you go by yourself, boo? Even and, then, and you're even like, then, I'm waiting outside yeah. too. Or if I, she takes too long, I'll be like, oh, she's taking long. Yeah. Um, she's taking too long. I'll uh-huh. go in there and be like, Mick. She'll be like, Yeah. I'm like, You good? Yeah. Okay. Cool. And I just come back. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I never thought about it. Well, basically, w- one thing I want to chime in is because at the time, Marisol was saying, Oh, well, see, finally America's being open minded and nice and kind to everyone and accepting and all that. And then Rob even said, Well, hey, I like to be progressive, but shit, sometimes in some realms, mm-hmm. it's just not practical, yeah. such as. You know, girls playing football or dudes beating up on women in some UFC type shit. So, the basically what I want to say is that with every argument, whether it's Harry Styles wearing a dress, whether it's you know Jeffrey St- Shane Dawson getting all that money from the makeup, whatever, whatever. There's always like a, a fly argument. There's always like a real cool little argument. Like for example, like well, Rob, Mister, I don't want gender fluid people using non-gender binary restrooms let me just tell you that these people are more likely to be victims of assault than actually assaulting people right Mm -hmm. so that's a real cool like oh man damn you got me man fuck what do i say to that but like the way mighty soul said is like well how do we know a person is really identifying like that and not just being a creep yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah, when the case you're making is that it's a it's a mental like fluidity where one day you feel like one thing, the next like, come on, man, there's got to be a hard line in sand with that stuff as well. Yeah, and there there's got to be some. Like yesterday, Ellen Page is all of a sudden a guy, right? Just identified as a guy, but she's playing a female role so, in her series. So Ben Shapiro, Ben Shapiro made some good points. He said, he said, uh, I know the media likes to play this game where the minute somebody says, "Oh, I'm not Ellen Page anymore, I'm Elliot Page," he says they all instantly pivot and now we all have to call this person elliot bam from day one he's like well for the purposes of this video this elliot person's new no one's gonna know who the fuck i'm talking about so i'm gonna call this bitch ellen (laughs) so he's like i'm gonna call her ellen even though she goes by elliot at least for today because this shit is new and he made a whole bunch of good points just saying like why is it that she's able to play like a trans man or a lesbian or a straight female regardless of how she identifies but they gave uh some female actress a lot of flack when she dr- tried to play a trans man and they were like no only trans, trans can play like trans. trans shit like that mm. and uh and then he said ellen slash elliot is in a relationship with a woman so she was already lesbian mm-hmm. right now she's identifying as a Man. straight male. So so she's, she's still so with the sweet. same woman. Yeah, she still likes women. It's she's just not a, a lesbian anymore. And, and, her, and she congratulated her now husband for coming out as yes. that was. It. And here's you know this is what it's an example of what some of my closest friends will send me. You know, and this is somebody who is uh, just weeks away from being a lawyer. She sends me the story, and it's a picture of Mike Pence. So seeing Mike Pence have to swear in a Democrat senator with a biracial woman in a purple wig and zebra print coat hold a bible is extremely pleasing to me and like that's that's the image right so and so I, who is that person with the purple hair uh it's so he's hold the mike pence is swearing in a democrat senator uh-huh. so oh, that's, that's a the senator. senator with a bisexual woman in a purple wig and zebra coat holding the bible okay i don't know what her position in in politics is but you know and, and it's extremely all caps pleasing to see this is a lawyer mm-hmm soon to be lawyer who's a really good friend of mine Mm -hmm. one of my best friends that will side on that side so heavily that will send me stuff like this just to see if they can get a rise out of me and my only response was and this was a genuine response that's why this is the greatest country to ever exist because you can do that good Mm -hmm. now i heard someone make the argument that tds trump derangement syndrome which i had everybody get familiar with tds because it's a real thing tds is basically Trump derangement syndrome, and you really believe this man is a dictator, authoritarian, Hitler, uh, promotes race and, I mean, I'm sorry, hate and division, all right? So that's TDS. So the person, I forget forget who they were a guest on, but they basically said TDS is so real that this is a black dude. So I'm I'm curious because it's rare you hear like black conservatives saying this kind of thing. He says uh, smart people educated people he's like judges he's like people that are in the system that make important decisions 
they too can have TDS, meaning they're basing their decisions with the thought of, no, no, this man really is Orange Man Hitler. And then um, the CNN tapes, Mm -hmm. I haven't heard them, but from what I've heard, what Scott Adams was saying, he said, I always wondered, do they believe their own bullshit? Like the news that CNN puts out, the quote unquote news that they put out, do they really feel that way? Or they're just kind of like doing it because it's going to get the clicks. He said, based on some of the tapes he heard, he's like, no, they really believe this shit. He's like, so it kind of made me feel better that they weren't just like lying to their people. He's like, no, they truly fucking believe. Yeah. Like they're not just sociopaths. They're Mm -hmm. actually just a little mentally, a little crazy. They're more like psychopaths. Yeah. They're more like psychopaths. Yeah. Not sociopaths because you do. And sometimes it may be that it, that it's their good performers. Like who won the Emmy? Was it Cuomo? He won an Emmy, right? For what? Killing the most people? (laughs) Yeah. Right. So, and then you, you think about what you just said is, okay, his performance is so genuine because you can hear him say something and it's the, it could be the craziest, most outlandish thing, but he says it in such a convincing way to a lot of, we'll call them normal Americans that they're like, he really believes that. And I, th- I think what he's saying actually is factual. Well, the way our brains work, you know, our brains are like designed to, uh, you know, because of evolution and stuff, like designed to notice change. So the news tends to talk about change. Like, oh, it was warm yesterday, but now it's cold. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that humans, we're flawed. Our brains are flawed. And it's easy for us to get caught up in this like mass hypnosis. And we trust the news. We really believe that a story that's put out today, five years from now, won't be debunked. Five years from now, we don't, you know what I'm saying? We don't think, well, five years from now, this shit, they're going to be like, oh, that was bullshit. But it happens all the time. And it happens during one lockdown, during one quarantine. Um, Depending on where you live, man, I heard Newsom. I heard he, he like shut restaurants down completely. I got that video queued wow, up. I, I heard everything. Oh, I wait, I wait. heard he's gonna shut down the entire state. Is that yeah. true? He's like, no going outside, Man. no walking. Play the tape, dog. I gotta queue it, it up. Hold oh on. Y'all God. voted for that. No way, man. Oh, also, did you see that video I sent you, Rob, where somebody who owns a store basically put all oh, the politicians, that. babe, that are out there that are fucking have said one thing and then the hi- do hypocrites? the opposite hypocrites? What did he put? Oh, they they did. I sent it to you too. I, so I DM'd it to he, you. Basically, it's whole, just a their, video. Their storefront windows Store. have like Gavin Newsom and a quote, and you know the and then the showing hypocrisy. him do the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was hilarious. It's a, a very great video. Um, I don't. Too bad we don't, there's not a way to post it for you guys. Maybe well, once we'll we post some this. stories of the what did he said page for sure. Yeah. Um. It's you know what I need to log back in there and I, when I get these things I should start. Yeah, that's a good reposting point. Reposting yeah, them on the story for people to see because um, my friend Maria, um, she also um, went down to rabbit hole during the quarantine. Mm-hmm. So she said she kind of started getting, um, you know, just kind of a little bit suspect and just kind of thought it was odd. And what, what, did, what did she think was odd? She didn't say anything specific. She just said that she just started feeling like certain things were odd and didn't make sense, right? Mm-hmm. And then um, all of a sudden, she said she felt like, okay, I'm gonna start researching this shit on mm-hmm. my own. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, she's a stay at home mom, and she said she discovered a lot of these things, and she's just like, no way. Um, her husband's also a police officer, so when a lot of these things started to happen and people wanted to defund the police, she just kind of felt like, wait a minute, why would you? Why would you even want that? You know? And so, it's very interesting because she came, she DM'd me, and she said, um. It feels good to know that I know someone who kind of sees things, this, you know, in a, in, you know, this kind of through the same lens. And like I said, I do. And at the same time, I also I am somebody who sees both sides. So I get, you know, both sides and going back to the topic about, you know, males t- taking over the, the, the female uh, industry and the makeup. You know, I don't see nothing wrong with it. You want to know why? Because that just means females are not working hard enough to mm. really like. I think push they're just themselves. being too nice and they thinking it's fly to be like, yes, we're going to have, you know, you go, boy, you know, you do your thing, you know, <laughs> get, get your lace front in. And I mean, that's cool, but it's like, from what it seems like, every time you walk past a Morphe, Mac, mm. any of these makeup places, it's always a dude. Yeah, it is. Always. It's like they get top billing, they get the best placement which means their project that they're involved with probably gets more push because a, a, a Mac isn't going to put um, 
a, a, a collaboration that isn't a priority, they're not going to put it right by the, the aisle of the mall. But I also want to yeah. I also want to point out, guys, or maybe I'm wrong if, if there's a listener out there that maybe could fact check this for me. But it's also the newer, more um, trendy brands mm -hmm. that are open to that. Because, for example, Lancome does not have a male. Mm -hmm. Clinique does not either. Estee Lauder does not either. They're uh, they're about the elegance of a woman. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. you know the luxury of females. Yeah, and I'm sure they'll they'll still sell their products to males, yeah, so they can course. wear it however they want. Yeah, but they don't. I've not yet to see them use. They also don't need any influencers. Yeah. They're they've been around for the longest, longer than any of these other brands. So that's the reason why I I, I know that. But they also I noticed that they just kind of stick to like this is female. And we do females. And maybe maybe they look at some of this stuff as like just trendy and they rather be more classic and not jump at every single thing. Because that's why like people try to misinterpret my stance on the Vanessa Guillen thing. It's like who could possibly not be upset with what happened? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who could possibly not care? And I think, but I also saw that people were trying to just either trigger our emotions, you know what I'm saying? Or, I mean, I know I, I always paid attention to what the family's goal was, which is, hey, we're trying to get this solved. We're not getting enough attention on base. We're trying to investigate this stuff. I always paid attention and respected what they were trying to do, but I was always kind of um, peeping game in terms of, well, who could try to twist this and try to turn it into a raza issue? And this finally we have our own, you know, brown and hey, brown lives matter too. You know, I was just peeping because it was mm -hmm. right around the George Floyd thing. And it was when you saw Antifa infiltrating other people's movements, you saw white liberals hijacking people's movements. So I was very, you know, weary of that. And sometimes, man, as you can see, even when people are upset and offended, even that shit is trendy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Meaning, mm -hmm. uh, everybody, put put the black square. Everybody put a black square. And I mean, shit, we were upset too by what we saw with the George Floyd. We're like, who the fuck is this Chauvin dude? What's going on with this Minneapolis Police Department? Why is he on his neck? What the hell is happening here? And, you know, everybody jumped and turned their, the, everybody posted black square. And I'm like, hmm, well, hang on. You know, I didn't learn this part till later about, persuasion which is if you can get someone to alter their self-image and start seeing themselves as an activist you have more control over them and if you can get everybody to simultaneously chime in and do what do what you want them to do you have more control you should play mm -hmm. that video of that uh, white comedian doing the whole thing and that's what i mean these are people who have been listening to the red pill tamales yeah who have Send you stuff. Send me stuff. Yeah, you see yeah. I get, I get stuff all the time too now, and it's pretty interesting. I can't wait for um, some of the bonus episodes to be like the full foil episodes because some of the things they've sent me is like whew, all out foil. Yeah, all out foil. I appreciate y'all. I need real. to wear a full hat for one of these clips just to get people like <laughs> I knew it. Yeah, right. Here, I'm gonna this real quick. There's a five minute. You know, go, what's his face? Garcetti did a whole thing about the stay at home, oh, like man. full lockdown thing. But here's just this a quick. This is the L.A. Mayor. Yeah. My way. I didn't even plug it into the board. Hold on. <laughs> One second. Um, shout out to all our people in California, man. Um, shout out to Jerry Garcia, Jesus Trejo, Jesus Sepulveda, uh, all the homies out there. We actually have some L.A.-based artists that will be at my release party. Shout out to Tres from Compton, Racheton, representing El Salvador, the Pupusa Prince. And uh, it's going down December 10th on the north side, San Antonio. How are they doing, by the way? Uh, all my friends yeah, out there? Yeah, everybody. Well, I try to, like, ask them, like, hey, man, is it true? Like, yo, what's up with this curfew? And stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, some folks are just like, well, you know, motherfuckers don't wear their masks, bro. And that's oh, what happens. Okay. It's because we got cases. I'm like, well, shit, we got cases, too. I gotcha. My, well, message, my message couldn't be simpler. It's time to hunker down. It's time to cancel right everything. And if it isn't essential, don't do it. Don't meet up with others outside your household. Don't host a gathering. Don't attend a gathering. Hmm. And following our targeted safer at home order, if you're able I know. to stay Go home. Hold on, stop, 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 Oh, yeah, my stop, son didn't have stop, headphones. Stop, stop. My message. Okay. 
Yeah, she doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. So here, you listen to what. <laughs> yeah, that was it. And start over because uh, Marisol doesn't have headphones. Have speakers and we got to get some more for Marisol next time. She's All right, here we go. One more time, Mayor Garcetti. Its message couldn't be simpler. It's time to hunker down. It's time to cancel everything. And if it isn't essential, don't do it. Don't meet up with others outside your household. Don't host a gathering. Don't attend a gathering. And following our targeted safer at home order, if you're able to stay home, stay home. So basically not do anything, right? Stay at home at all. You know, don't go outside your front lawn. Don't, oh, don't go in your front lawn? Yeah, don't go outside. Don't basically, meet with anybody. Basically, y'all are on house arrest. Basically, right? It's yeah. jail. You turn your home into a jail cell. It's a so bummer. Who, who's paying him? Like, hold on, bro. What what ties? You, you Does he have ties to China? I mean, uh, what is the motivation? That's why, a good point. Why so extreme? So he's literally trying to lock down all of L.A.? Yeah. Starting when? This already started. And for how long? Uh, that's a good point. I don't think. Cause y'all no, know, they don't know. They well, don't know. Well, check this out, y'all. We're damn near in March again. Yeah. I mean, it's December, January, February, March. And we back to where the fuck we started. And they still playing their little bullshit games. So you can calm yourself out if you want. But I'm not just going to go along with bullshit rules just because. <clears throat> because, because last point real quick. And I'll hand it over. Don't forget. That a healthy economy is intertwined with your good health care, like your good public health. Like if you don't have a good economy, everything else goes to shit. And I think that's one of the things that uh, Trump kind of took into consideration, which was, okay, I got to keep everybody positive. We're going to get through this. Hey, don't worry. Look at the stock market. We're about to come back bigger than ever, the golden era, keeping everybody positive and trying to keep the economy open. Because if your economy goes to shit, your whole everything, everything. Yeah, and people will say real quick, like, "Oh, you care more about again economy and money than than lives." But you have to understand how many lives are, tri- or, or, you know, they go hand in hand. Big time. The, the, this, oh. These businesses, the shutdowns, losing these businesses. But Kaylee's, uh, Kaylee McEnany's uh, little press conference she had the other night. <laughs> Bro, she they said, so y'all are still having the uh, Christmas party at the White House. She said. If y'all can protest, if y'all can celebrate. Oh, yeah, celebrate can, Biden, Biden winning. Win, yeah, Biden winning, then we can have it. Yeah, for sure. Is that not facts? Yeah. Here's uh. No. So y'all probably were the cause of this spread because y'all were out there celebrating no, something. That ain't no, no, even... no, Marisol. It was a very, most people were wearing masks. Okay, as well, they, they were six celebrating, feet away, though, so. They were celebrating president-elect. They were the, not to the butt. Basement. They were not to butt, all right? They but. Were, you got it. You, I bet not seeing you in your front lawn. <laughs> uh, there's an account called his name. I don't know if you follow him. So I am um, Ian, uh, Ian Smith Fitness. So have you seen any of his videos? He's got a beard down to his belt buckle. Uh, he's wow. got a gym in you know, New Jersey that has been like the, basically the target of all of these shutdowns. Mm. And they've been yeah. fined $15,000 a day since I think it was June. So this guy, very, very smart guy. He's been, he's very smart, very smart. Uh, he started basically coming together with a bunch of other business owners and tackling everything that's been thrown at them by whatever the mayor is of, uh, of New Jersey or of that area. And there's a video I wanted to play to get you guys to see it. Uh, so tonight, they launched a video where tonight they were going to be uh, like announcing this national business association, whatever, where it's helping all these businesses that are being forced to shut down mm. and how they're just going to reopen. You're just going to have to reopen. There's, he said, basically, there's more people than our sheriffs. They can't take us all to jail. They can't continue to force you to shut your business. Um, real quick, not trying to debunk your last video, mm-hmm. but I could have sworn I just saw something that said that there was a judge in California that basically denied what they were trying to do in California so because it, it, it's not legal. <laughs> None of it is legal. <laughs> None of it is legal. Do you know that? None of it. So... I understand that, but this is the way the left is working right now with their rules. They say, in plain sight, right in front of you, they pretty much just say this. Hey, don't worry about the law right now, because right now it's a pandemic, and we just got to make exceptions to some, like, you know, the motherfucking Constitution and shit like that. Um, This is what I wonder. All right. When your Lina Hidalgo's and your Garcetti's or Newsom, like, whoever is in charge of creating rules, mandates, and all that kind of crap. 
what all math goes into their equation. You see what I'm saying? Like, in other words, okay, obviously California plays by a different equation than Texas, right? But I'm curious if Governor Newsom or Garcetti said, well, this is what we do, Chingo. First, we calculate how overrun, like what percentage capacity our hospitals are at. Then we look at the cases. Then we look at mortality rate. And then we factor in X, Y, Z at holidays and things like that. And then we become more aggressive. And then we have red zone. Like, they should probably explain that shit and, and, and be like, that's why you can't go on your front lawn. So <laughs> although you're sitting... Rob and Marisol, I understand y'all saying, hey, there's a thing called the law, but this is our math. And based on hospital capacity, mortality rate, cases, yada, yada, yada. But no, of course, they're not going to, they just, that motherfucker's at a restaurant right now. Governor Newsom probably party of 15. 22. Mm. Yeah, 22 people. Yeah, it's 22. Right? Yeah. 22. Damn. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, I think uh, Americans are fine. I, well, I saw this. I, I think I DM'd it to you also, Rob, yeah. um, where the news the news person who was there like uh, doing some kind of report about businesses shutting down, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, this is not right. Like, you know what I'm saying? They can't do this and I'm still going to, you know, run business. I'm open for business. I don't care what they said. I'm trying um, to look at what you said about the judges. What I do remember reading was that the judge had sided with the church as far as them trying to shut down the churches. Mm. Uh, I do remember that that was was not, you know, they didn't mm. let that f- fly anymore, which mm. here we are 10 months later. Now it's like, oh, you can have your church. Hashtag Chingo warned you. <laughs> it take, takes the air out of you sometimes just thinking about all Hashtag. the shit that's going on at one time. Like actually, and, and to circle back around earlier, we're talking about Minneapolis. You've been in Minneapolis, right? It's been a while. It's been a while, mm-hmm. but you know people that are still in mm-hmm. that area. Yeah, I know people from out there. And it ain't it ain't nothing too pleasant right no, now. No, they right? they send me pictures. Um, I think I sent them to you. Yes, but um, I mean I can just read through a few. Yeah, because because so, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Basically, someone posted a. So you want to defund the Minneapolis PD now? Question mark carjacking is up 537 percent last month on the verge of 80 homicides over 500 shootings over 3,000 shots fired and climbing 60 to 90 minute waits for the police to show up mpd force is down nearly 200 from a year ago overtime required from those who still serve is 37 times what it should be i don't know what that means senior citizens being beaten and robbed in broad daylight and you think defunding the MPD is a good idea. Really? And then they said, uh, make your voices heard on December 2nd. I don't know if they're like voting for some shit. Well, yeah. So, and to piggyback off of what Chingo just said, uh, in, the, in the Oracle ad brought up, incredibly, the city council still wants to further defund the police efforts, which it has been pursuing aggressively since June of this year. In the final days of November, they just announced another motion to take away another $8 million of funding from the police. And you know what the real fly uh word play that they use they're like no 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 rob uh defund the police doesn't literally mean defund the police it's we're gonna take some of that money and we're gonna put it into education because you know education is really where da, 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 da. and it's like okay so is it is it gonna make crime go up is it gonna be harder to get somebody to come to your house for some shit and are you defunding um the private cops from the rich neighborhoods or it's just us there's already been over 100 <laughs> cops to leave the Minneapolis Police Department. It's like, what are the... First of all, man, cops are getting disrespected left and right. You have all this anti-police rhetoric. And who's going to want to sign up? Joe, would, how much they pay cops? Probably uh, starting at like 50, 40 to... A year. Uh, really? 34. I don't think... I think like first year is 30... Look it up. Is there an I'm, hourly rate? I'll, no, I'll I think up. they're salary, babe. Okay, well, the reason... Oh, they might be hourly. They might be hourly, yeah. So let's just give it a ballpark. Like, think to yourself, Joe, what hourly rate... Like, if they say, hey, man, I'll give you $20 an hour to come be a cop. You get a gun and shit, you be in a car, but they're going to have to call you sometimes. You're going to have to pull up at nighttime and shit and flash your... You know, with your flashlight. <laughs> Considering... Now, factor this in. Anti-police rhetoric. They defunding the shit out of you. That means the bad guys got better shit than you got. And um, you, you ain't going to have enough homies or backup. 54000 is the median uh, salary across the United States. On average. Yeah, on average, it's about fifty grand To get, you know, disrespected, 
Sometimes shot at. Sometimes you got to chase motherfuckers, wrestle motherfuckers. You might have to jujitsu a motherfucker. And that's after like three to five years of experience. Your first year, more than likely, will be making 46. And after 10 years, you could be lucky to make 75. And then, God forbid, you're involved in an unfortunate situation where somebody ends up shot, hurt, dead. And now they got your picture and your email and, I mean, your address. They doxing you and they're like, this is the motherfucker. And then they don't show the whole tape. And so it just makes you look bad. I mean disrespected not paid well uh, enough to get shot at defunded less resources everything i just want to share a message that i just got just to show you guys how these folks are really digging it okay well i can show you a thousand sellout comments yeah, I, <laughs> after that one good one yeah but i feel like this these comments just they matter more they yeah, matter yeah, more these folks, to me like you know what I'm more saying? Sense. every time i get it for every bad comment I get about two good ones. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I've I'm okay with them. I've established TikTok is the ghetto of social media. <laughs> That's the projects, man. You get on TikTok, God damn, they coming out. Hey, motherfucker, piece of shit. Sell out your people, bitch. Biden. Team Biden. Puto. That's the funniest thing you've said all week. Thank you, sir. It's uh, it's crazy. Uh, I'm just going to read some part because a lot of it is she's like loving me. So I don't want to act like this is about me, but I'm just going to read the other part. Appreciate that. We'll put so, some music in the background. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, hello, I'm really, I really, I'm really hoping y'all see this message. She even DM'd it to the What Did He Said podcast cool. also. Um, but I'll just keep it short and straight to the point. I finally listened to your podcast today. Actually, the first three of RPT. While listening to number three, man, I wanted to shed a tear. Yo, my husband and I have been woke for 10 plus years. Well, 10 plus for him and about five for me. And we have felt so alone in this world for the way we think what we know, etc. We have lost family and friends for what we believe. My husband had already listened to your episodes and he told me, babe, wait till you hear Chingo's wife. You're going to love her. I said, okay, LOL. Why? <laughs> he goes, She's just woke. trust me, Marisol. She's thick I'm and woke. I'm calling you by name because you have become my, my girl in my head. Fuck that. You're my comadre. LOL. Hey, come to the show, baby. Hey. <laughs> We've never met a couple with the same beliefs, thought, experiences, American pride, Anything that would consider us sellouts slash coconuts. I could go on about uh, BS from the last four years, but that's for another episode. Anyway, I love y'all. Keep fighting the good fight. I love La Raza, but sometimes y'all got to tell them to fuck off. <laughs> episode three got me all in my feels. Hey, I love La Raza too, but some Raza, they just little kids and shit. Some of them are just trolls. Some are just like uh, low on the totem pole, low serotonin levels, and they depress and shit, and they taking it out on me. They are. We're trying to keep uh, manly men, you know. Yeah, make. hashtag manly men. Come on, y'all. Um, this they, everybody pause it right now. Do ten push-ups. I'm just <laughs> or ten pull-ups if you can do them. No, it's not. <laughs> you know what? You know what's funny um, about this whole manly man thing. Candace Owens is really like, and people are sending her. If you look at her stories, people will DM her like, um, like this one, one, one that she posted. It was her boyfriend like shoveling all the snow so they could get out their driveway and they're at their stand at their parents house and she said no one asked my boyfriend to go do that he did it on his own because it's the manly thing to do so that we could all get out the driveway you know what i mean her dad could have done it but instead he got up and you know what i'm saying and so forth so i thought that was pretty cool I was having this conversation last night, actually, with Don about, uh, like, she's like, you're really an anomaly in the way that I think, because, like, I, I think a lot of people can agree. My soul's comment earlier about having an open mind about people, how they feel, they identify as whatever. It is good to have both sides of it, right? But at a certain point, like I said earlier, there's got to be a line in the sand that you draw. And as much as I want people to feel like they can absolutely do and come and go and please as you want here in America, because you can, you have to try to sometimes let's just say um, all the time possible, find common ground, right? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of the people in the comment section, I don't think they've ever found common ground with anything. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. always got to be their way or the highway. Yeah. Otherwise, you're a sellout. You're a terrible person. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're a disgrace to whatever. It's like, hey, come on, man. Well, there's no telling where they came from or what they saw. They might have clicked on somebody's YouTube clickbait video that says, Chingo Bling denounces his raza. And they probably haven't heard any of these episodes. They probably don't follow the What Did He Said page. So... There's just so many variables. We can't put out every fire, fight every fight, control every narrative. All we could do is show everybody how we vibe and we could find our tribe. You know, like hey. like when we when we posted the photo for Fourth of July, all red, white, and blue and shit. Like I, it was bait. They came out like roaches. Look at these fucking coconuts. And then you click their shit. 
They got the BLM thing, the link for the money that they don't know where it's going. And uh, and they're just kind of going with the social justice warrior, like not really knowing. They're just going with the trend, you know. You want to know what's funny is um, that day. Let me just tell you what's crazy. I said, I haven't vlogged in a while. I was like, I think I want to vlog today. You know, it's 4th of July. We actually have something going on that doesn't consist of me running errands because that's what most of my vlogs are, um, you know. And we're so, so efficient. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know what I'm saying? So I just thought like, this is, this is going to be cool. You're actually. And when we posted the picture, I didn't get as much as he did. But when I posted the picture um, and I read, I'm sorry, he did. And I read the comments. I said, yeah, I'm not vlogging this. And, and now vlogging what exactly us have celebrating fourth of july uh, we went to the hotel we went you know what i'm saying we, did, yeah i knew all the comments were gonna be like you should have used this day to go to vanessa's march because it was happening that uh, same day and literally i was videotaping it before my vlog when i realized holy shit okay they already gave him shit about this picture and then later on right as i thought about it and you know you kind of have time to kind of let it all sink in i thought I just let someone, I just let a bunch of people who I don't know literally like dictate, uh, dictate mm-hmm. what I'm going to post and not post because I don't want to hear the nonsense. I don't want to hear the negativity. And I was a little so, upset so at myself because I felt, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I was a little upset with myself for doing that because somebody left a comment when they said sellouts and I just replied to them, what country were you born in? They not pro- one, resp- they couldn't reply. No. Not, you couldn't reply. And you know what? I filled out an applic. I helped Luisa fill out an immigration application today. Do you know that Latino is right now? Is it's Caucasian slash Latino? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they want to boost the white numbers. I guess I don't yeah. know. I don't know why it's Caucasian slash Latino. I don't know because one day they make us try to go by Latinx. I just don't understand that shit. Well, I'm Caucasian according to my to my birth certificate. Well, back, then, back then there was no Hispanic. So that's the funny thing too. Is like. This has been, this is like, you were born here. It's going to say you're an American. So here, here's the plan. Next 4th of July, we're going to put it in y'all's face. If you're anti-American, don't even go to my page. It's going to hurt your eyes. <laughs> it's going to be, I, I might be dressed as an American bald eagle. I mean, it's going to be so much patriotism. You're going to be flooded with like, God damn, man. Even the baby had a little flag and shit. And, you know, and then when, um, when those little clips were circulating, like Chingo Bling denounces his raza, stuff like that, they were commenting on Penny's picture uh, when we painted her face for Dia de los Muertos. So she had the little Mexican garb. And uh, of course, everyone's like, How dare you? I thought you were American, bitch. And you're over here. Take your kids out of that fucking sarape, motherfucker. Turn your back. Blah, 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 blah. And again, they're probably US citizens. Maybe. I don't know. I'm assuming. Um, for sure you are if you're that no, mad about something you have to be you fuck no, you I mean care. I don't know if they're United, illegal you know what I don't saying? know if they're illegal yeah they just were mad at me and they wanted to take it out on my kids caption sure. page the comment section but my point is this I'm unapologetically Latino Mexican American whatever and unapologetically this shit kicking in <laughs> proud of my country and I'm a hat of red, white, and blue. And I'm not going to be one of those people that is like, well, could we make a list of things that America can improve upon? And could we use this day to reflect and think about how we can make America better? Like, no, I know that was a trend too. I'm going to, I'm going to choose to, to, to my way of doing 4th of July is I'm going to sit back and think about all the injustice and the, it's like, bitch, it's 4th of July, ho. Turn up. Grab a hot dog and be happy you're like, here. And, and it goes back to people don't know how free they are. They don't know how many rights they have. Or a tofu they, dog. No. It's, uh, oh, tofu, a soy boy over there has mm. no idea. You're right. If you've never left the U.S., I mean, you're spoiled. You're able to talk shit about the president. You could talk shit about anything and everything. And, you know, you can... I don't know if you're allowed to burn a flag, but I mean, some of these... No, an- it's illegal for well, you to burn a the flag. Well, some of these Antifa people... And that's what I was mad... I seriously... I seriously was livid when I saw that. Oh, Just like I would you. be livid if I saw someone try to burn the, the Mexican, Mexican flag. flag. Any flag. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wait a minute. I don't know that I'd, if I saw someone burn a, a like a flag from Switzerland or something, I'd probably be like, damn, that's fucked up. Yeah, it's fucked are. up yeah. But I wouldn't be like... <gasps> but when I saw them do the American flag, I kind of felt like, you motherfuckers, why are you here then? 
Did you, you see that bitches? World War Two vet? Uh, this was probably six, seven months ago, and you know these people were processing and stuff, and they're walking them, you know, across somewhere at some, you know, event or whatever, and, and they're just yelling at him at this like World War Two vet, and he's like, you know, burn this country down, blah, blah, and this old man still with enough energy turns around, is like. Where's a gun? Let's finish these people off right now. What do you know? I didn't fight in World War II to have you yell at me to burn this country down. Good. Absolutely. So look, so I don't know if I mentioned this on the last episode, but like talking about how we don't appreciate how free, how good we have it. The reason Mexico, the reason people in Mexico end up getting the shaft is because Mexico's so rich in natural resources that corruption is high. So if Mexico didn't have shit, it, the pinches bandidos, the politicians and them, they wouldn't have no no, no resource to... No leverage. Sh- nothing to sell out their people, literally. Like, they fucked over their people. And when we were talking to Luisa in the morning, it was like a cold morning. And we're, she was like, man, in Mexico, or where she's from, she's like, it, it gets so cold that you don't want to bathe every day. It's like, for one, she's like, it's a whole fucking ordeal. You know, the water boiler, like the gas. She's like, the gas is expensive. People, um, I don't know if it's black market, but like you can buy some gas from a dude like with a little cart and he'll come fill your thing up for X amount because everything is privatized. So it's one gas company. It's one uh, gasoline company, Pemex. That's it. Ain't no Chevron, Exxon, Mm -hmm. Texaco, Stripes. It's one. Mm -hmm. Ain't no Valero. It's one. There's no free market competition. Nobody could compete for pricing. Who gets fucked? The regular working, the citizens, working yeah. class citizen that's like, well, it sure is a hot day today, but uh, it's not that the AC, I, it's not that I can't afford an AC in El Walmar. It's that electricity is so fucking high because it's only one. one and I, I was trying to explain to Joe the difference between how their light company is privatized and how in America... Or was it in Texas that it was regulated? Mm -hmm. The light companies. What was it? Nationwide? I don't know if it was nationwide. I know Texas did it. So so back in the day, we had HLMP, right? Back when it was regulated. And then you had deregulation and other companies were able to pop up and sell energy and compete. Mm -hmm. Well, in Mexico, it's privatized. And it's the governments. And they're so rich in natural resources that it kind of fucked them. And I've heard that Japan is poor in natural resources but rich because there's just so honest there's no corruption africa has the most minerals petroleum diamonds so much natural resources it's like rich in natural resources but that causes corruption and people sell out their people they just like Mm -hmm. hey the dutch you want some of these diamonds hey de beers come build a mine and the the regular people that that were born there are like fuck what about us that that's a clip on its own. That's for sure. all very good points. That's like a whole episode yeah. for people to understand that, which a lot of us don't know. Mm-hmm. A lot of us don't because we don't really. Well, I hope the people y'all voted for don't make it to where we end up more like Mexico, which well, is that's why they're calling Beijing Biden, Beijing Biden. So in Mexico, they will come to your house. Hey, la vacuna cabrones. Like it's a different type of I don't know if it's socialized healthcare. But their health system is set up to where, I don't know if it's so, I need to find out if it's socialized or not, but they can come to your door and they will force you. Like, don't they do forced hysterectomies after a certain age? I think at 35, Luisa said, I mean, I don't know if it's just where she's from. So if you you got in, you guys are from Mexico or fact check, if you guys could send us the actuality of it, that'd be great. But, uh... She said that basically after you're 35, like if you're 35 and you're still having a kid to avoid, I guess, having like more children who have disabilities, what they do is they basically do a hysterectomy and like you can't have no more kids. Like Luisa's like, allá no se miran enfermos, malitos. She said they don't, you don't see a lot of Down syndrome kids, a lot of kids with, she said that she had never heard of like autism and all that. Or really? She's like, until they ain't got she that got shit here. in Mexico. And I was like, are you kidding? That's everywhere. She's like, no, I think that's mostly y'all here in America. She goes, and I think it's y'all's food. She says it's our food, mm. which is very, I can see that. You know what I'm saying? Because we're just so into like, you know, processed, processed food, stuff, yeah. you know? So I can totally see that. Yeah, it's convenient. Mm. While them, like mm. she said, she says like there's a lady that mm. would drive by selling meat. You know, it's fresh meat. You know what I'm saying? That they just come from their farm. It's people who own these farms. They process. And they need to like sell their fucking cows to make money obviously to live so they sell they buy fresh meat 
We well, don't buy fresh meat here. I don't know if convenience is the argument or the reason, but I would argue that Mexico has more of those world, uh, old world customs, meaning mm-hmm. like, like Italy, like Italy and p- places like that. People, or really, the rest of the world, they go to the market. Or they go to the little store or they'll hit the fruit stand or they'll buy every day. Yeah. So their refrigerators are smaller in a lot of places and they have to go and stock up often like, oh, hey, pick up, pick up those those things for dinner. Whereas here you're stocking up for like a week or two. Well, that's why uh, you guys ever looked up. And now that I mention it, now that it's on everybody's phone and the speakers are hearing it, the probably see suggested videos or urban harvesters. Have you ever watched any kind of urban harvesters around the world where it's people that set up like their own greenhouses and farms like in and like in a city area? It's super fascinating stuff, like anything from like microgreens to like, you know, whatever kind of vegetables you want to make. Right. But they make huge like greenhouses in their backyard off of just half an acre maybe or an acre and they produce enough food for their family and then they also end up making a business out of it because they they can make so much of these certain vegetables uh, any time of the year inside the greenhouse it's a really interesting thing but there's a huge channels called like urban harvester and urban forester or something it's pretty interesting shit to know to to like get kind of uh uh, like familiar with Mm -hmm. just in case you have to do that eventually yeah and stuff like that is so um appealing to me even though i'm not very like I'm more of a city boy than a country boy, right? Yeah. But so many things of country life are attractive. I know it's hard work. You can't just call somebody to fix some shit. You get, you're probably going to have to get out there and, and haul shit around and kick mud around. But um, just everything from what we were saying, like what do big cities have? They usually Democrat run. No offense. I'm not saying like I just think they're managed poorly. Yeah. I think there's a lot of corruption. I think hey, maybe our voting systems here in town aren't the best. Somebody got a little plug on some on some votes. Um, you're going to have, when there's a tragedy and money gets raised, the shit might get shuffled through the wrong hands. Just a bunch of bullshit like that where it's just inefficient. And whereas in the country, you're a little bit more independent and you're isolated and you can kind of maybe be self-sufficient perhaps or maybe your neighbor sells some shit or you can get something down the road and... You know, yeah, my siblings are all getting older and we all went out to my parents for Thanksgiving. Right. And it's, you know, uh, like our little compounds on seven acres, you know, it's literally it's just the sky and the fucking cows and the sounds and all of them. I'm hearing them more and more say, ah, oh, it's so peaceful because mm-hmm. they all live in you know, Austin, Houston, you know, Heights area and shit. And there's you have like, more than one sibling. Yeah, I have three. Oh, I thought you only had one sister. Four. I have a real sister with my parents, and then I have three older half siblings. Mm. And they all have kids, but they all—they're also very, very city-like. As soon as they left the country, they were like, "Fuck that!" And now they're getting older and have kids. They're like, "I kind of really want to go back to that." I want that. I want to have a place. I don't mind buying it now. I can't say I'm ready to live there full time. No, I hear you. Like I want to live there. I want, when I'm tired of being here, like uh, I want to go over there for the week, or even if it was every weekend that I went to this other spot, my other spot, I'd be okay with it. Um, but I like the convenience. I'm sorry. I really do. I'm I with like you. I that. Agree. I, I live downtown and you know what I'm saying? I can get to everything like super duper quickly. You know what I'm saying? So like my, like, you know, my mom has asked plenty of times. Like she says, I wish you guys lived over here. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, she's more in the suburbs. Cause she's not super country, suburbs. Right. You know what I'm saying? So every time I, I'm always telling my sort of like, well, I mean, shit, we're paying all this money to be over here by these homeless people. And look at this. They fucking spray painted some communist propaganda like two blocks from us on a fucking wall with the little Russian communist symbol. And it says U.S. democracy is bankrupt and all this bullshit. And I'm so I'm always complaining about stuff like that. I'm always trying to plant a seed in her head like, well, you know, I don't know about this mayor and, you know, this and that. And she'll be like, don't start. Don't start, peep. Don't get all fucking... Don't be a hardcore Republican where you close minded mm-hmm. and you trying to be out there in the country, not fuck with nobody. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying shit's always flooding and they can't fix it. We have a drainage problem in the city and whoever's in charge of these budgets. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'm continuing to invest in the city just so you sure. know. Um, so and 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 I hope to also have a spot where. Yeah eventually I don't want to be here when I'm old. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I already did the young thing. So I'm ready to bounce. I'm going to let y'all other youngsters take over. And, you know, I hope that my children uh, continue managing my rental property so that I don't have to come over here and I can go ahead and be in the, in, sure. you know, out of town. That's a strategy. But I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to be out there. I, yeah. I like being in the city. I like diversity. I don't care what, again, I didn't vote Republican because you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, because what 
Finish that. I just I didn't I didn't vote Republican because I'm just this big hardcore like you know MAGA hat MAGA, wearing. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's what people think for sure. It's a huge stereotype. Where that's why they don't ask you, did you vote for Trump? Uh, are you in support of Trump? No, they say, are you a Trump supporter? Mm-hmm. And motherfucker asked me that, and I'm like, hold on, cuz like, <laughs> put it the way. Like, why we gotta say it like that? You're not just finna brand me some shit. Because they already, oh, sell that shit to your fucking Proud Boy friends now, homie. And it's like, okay, I don't know shit about the Proud Boys. I really don't know much. I just know that they're not all white and they're not what y'all say they are. And But I know what Antifa be about. Do you know that you're on that side? And mm-hmm. I don't call you Antifa, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. So don't think that just because you voted for anti-China and you voted for America first and law and order and the economy and jobs and shit like that doesn't mean you're a fucking KKK, Hitler, racist motherfucker. Yeah, because I love I love different cultures. You know what I'm saying? I love different cultures. It's like we foods. live in a black neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, I the, love the it. The first KKK members to yeah, live in a black exactly. neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. Like, I've always been like that. I've traveled <laughs> since I was little. My mom did a very good job of making sure that, you know what I'm saying? Even if it was just going to Mexico, because that's what we could afford, we never went to the same place. You see what I'm saying? Mexico is so beautiful that we went to different places in Mexico. My parents made an effort for us to see other things. And granted, we didn't fly. We drove drove because they felt obviously it was more reasonable but we also would stop in every state on the way to florida so we'd get to see alabama we'd get to see mississippi we'd get to see georgia you know what i'm saying so we do all these things so i thank my parents for that so i like seeing different people that don't all look like me you know what i'm saying so i don't want to live in this fucking like uniformed place so for me it's important especially for for Penny and you know what I'm saying? Uh, and you know, Mickey, she, you know, she lives with her mom. So she lives in a cookie cutter neighborhood. She lives in a cookie cutter area. So, you know, obviously she sees just kind of one demographic, one style, you know what I'm saying? And that's great for her. That's how she's, that's good for her. You know what I'm saying? That's what her mom chose for her. And that's okay. We all have different things that we want our kids to be like. For me, I want for Penny to be very open-minded. I want for her to understand that we are not all the same. We don't all have the, the same religious beliefs. Reality is subjective. And you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to let you know what's up now. You're not going to, I'm not going to let public school brainwash, brainwash you. you so that you are aware. You know what I'm saying? And you are alert. And that when so, when a teacher, because I, and I tell Mickey this all the time when she says, well, my teacher said, I said, well, you, you can tell your teacher that your stepmom said this. And if she has a problem, she can call you. She, she can call up. me. And I always tell her that because we, we can meet up in the comment section. Yeah, because I told her, I said, you're not going to you're not going to influence my children to to be a certain way just because whoever told you to teach that to children. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know who told you, you know, but that's kind of the reason, honestly, number one, why we've talked about this on plenty of other podcasts. If you've listened to the if you've been a, a what did he say podcast listener that I've always wanted to homeschool my children mm-hmm. because I didn't I wanted to be the first person to influence my child. I don't want a stranger, a teacher, although teachers have the hardest job in the world. You know what I'm saying? They are amazing. And I really wish that we would do more for teachers in the sense of offering more pay. You know what I'm saying? Of resources for them. You know what I'm saying? Like not making them teach a million kids because you don't have enough teachers. You know what I'm saying? Where you can't give undivided attention to this one child that's struggling and you just go ahead and send them to special ed classes because you can't give that attention to that child because your classroom is so big. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So that's kind of my reason a lot of times why I felt like she was not going to go to public school and I was going to homeschool her was because I needed for her to know the truth. We already you know? see the difference mm-hmm. when uh, with Mickey going to private versus public. We already see the difference. Mm-hmm. Earlier when you were talking about, uh, you know, Beijing Biden and, you know, the social <laughs> democratic socialist type of agenda that, you know, we're trying to prevent to overrun the, the country. And then you brought up driving through Georgia and stuff. So there's two uh, senator runoff races coming up in January and your boy LeBron James. I don't know if Joseph's a big basketball fan. No, but uh, LeBron, you know, you would hope he was out of the limelight after the finals. Right. But what he's doing now is uh, LeBron James is recently uh, taking his organization more than a vote to Georgia, targeting the two election runoff races. And your boy also had these wonderful words to say about Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams, who's down there? She's a monster. Shout out, Stacey. You're unbelievable. So you're over the next eight weeks, you know, six weeks or Beetle, so. Is that Beetlejuice? 
No. No, no. no, no that's Mayor Lightfoot from oh. Chicago. Uh, there's going to be a lot of fuckery afoot in Georgia for the Dems to try to get these last two uh, mm. runoff Senate race seats. So, Can you tell everybody what's at stake? So right now, they basically, if they win these two seats, they will have uh, basically like a 50-50 tie with the Republicans in the Senate. So anytime something goes up for, you know, for a uh, vote, if it ever reaches a stalemate of 50-50, the vice president has the vote. So if Kamala and Biden mm. go into the, you know, into office, it's she would have the That's what Donald Trump spoke about yesterday. Yeah. In his speech. Yeah. Super, super dangerous in the sense that they could have the the presidency they could have uh 50 50 in the senate which would also almost give them the senate even though they don't have a majority and still have uh, the house until uh they flip enough seats to get pelosi out of the house which and, is close and they were trying to pack the courts right. meaning right. either what add seats to the supreme court or make it super liberal yeah. to where it's no point having a supreme court yeah the whole point of the supreme court being the highest court of the land is a, if a if a case gets that far you're gonna have a more uh, what's the word a fair fight mm -hmm. versus you already know what the fucking outcome is going to be if it makes it to the a super liberal supreme court you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. it defeats the purpose of having one so on top of everything you just mentioned they were also trying to pack the courts that's why they're like trump better not put amy, amy coney barrett in there mm -hmm. and then they kept asking in the debate joe uh, are you going? Are you going? Y'all going to pack the courts? Oh, I don't want to. Hey, y'all going? And journalists weren't asking Biden that. Mm -hmm. Hey, are you guys going to stack the courts? And when they tried, he'd be like, mm -hmm, bro, you know, I'm not. You know, everything is. Which by packing it means just adding more Supreme Court justices, which hasn't been done uh, or tried, I think, since FDR. And even then, wow. when the Democrats when the Democrats tried it, then even them themselves were like, hey, whoa, FDR, relax. I don't think we need to do that. Which is, I don't know how many years ago that was now, a long time. And it would give them a seven to six, you know, majority in the House where basically any liberal policy they want to get passed could get passed. So Stacey Abrams also got the call. So she's one of the Senate people? No, she's that's it's in Georgia. She's so she was what, a mayor? What was she? Governor, I think. Oh, that's what she was? Oh, she, no, she's the House Minority Leader. Okay, I don't even know what that is of a state. I have no idea. But um, she got to call in the Jeezy Gucci Man oh, that's battle. Right. Did you see the Jeezy versus Gucci Man battle? They had Stacey. Hey, all right, Bert is Gucci. And Jeezy's like, yeah. And they're like, all right, fellas. All right, y'all ready? But first, somebody want to zoom in real quick. Hi. Hi, Gucci. Hey. Hey, Jeezy. Hey, Miss Abrams. How you doing? How you doing, Stacey? And I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I came to see a battle. Why? Is, what is this? Like the Democrats automatically have dibs. Hey, y'all, it's a black event happening. We, we got to be all up in it. Got to be in there. From the jump. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe Gucci and Jeezy are cool with her. I don't know. Well, the way LeBron's trying to talk. And then also, there, you're already seeing people that are telling others to go to move to Georgia, register as a resident. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. um, so that is true. I didn't know oh, if yeah. it was just a rumor, but I had oh, yeah. seen some uh, <laughs> stuff on some of those accounts where they were saying it. And, I, and that's what I'm telling you. Like, I'm even, I, I even like double check to make sure these, you know, these red pill accounts are like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, I want to make sure you ain't trying to tell me something, you know? So yeah. I'm cautious with them too. So I like try to check both yeah. sides. Why move people when you could just use Dominion software? <laughs> the same people that say, hey, y'all, y'all not allowed to look at the code of how this thing works. Like when's the last time you saw Dominion software people on TV saying, hey, everybody, I know everybody uh, is some, half the country is a little upset and people were saying something about USB drives and the thing, let me show you what the, rest assured, here's a machine. I'm going to show it to you. What happens is you click here. They're not doing that, obviously, because they're in the middle of a bunch of court cases and they don't want to, like, purge themselves and say too much. But if if a, you think if a bank was hiring, if Joe walks in trying to sell software, like, hey, bank, we're, this is going to help with your systems. They're going to be like, OK, can we look at the code? And Joe says, no, 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 that's proprietary. You can't look at it. They're going to be like, well, fuck you. We're going to use Rob's software. Because he's letting us see what's going on. Yeah. A bank wouldn't go with it. Why should our vote, why should our elections of the baddest bitch, America, Those he, Those hearing it? videos that are, you know, that are being, you know, are the hearings that are going on and the videos that are coming out from it is spicy. We're the seeing, Michigan ones? Yeah, man, with uh, briefcases and uh, suitcases underneath tables getting brought out when they told poll watchers to leave and then the counting resumed. Like, they have the evidence now. Like, all the people that say there is no evidence, you have to stop saying that. So this is how the Democrats are doing it, right? When you have these people um, saying, I'm a witness, I'm going to tell y'all what I saw. And I and one girl says, I signed my name on a paper that says, if I'm lying, I go to jail. 
Did, did you, you? Did you sign one of those? And, uh, uh, okay, uh, we're going to move on now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So here's, here's basically what the Democrats are doing. You can have all these people saying, well, this is what I saw. They had me park the mail, the mail truck over here instead of over here. Or this is what I saw. They wouldn't let us in the room. And da, da, da. Well, this is what I saw. It's like if everybody said they witnessed a stabbing in the street, the Democrats would be like, mm, I know everyone said they saw a stabbing in the street on Tuesday afternoon, but there's no widespread. Like, we don't. Where's the evidence? Where's the proof? And it's like, okay, all these people saying they saw some shit. You got to factor some of that is like, unless everybody's lying. It's fucking crazy. It's straight out of a movie. It's straight out of House of Cards. It makes me want to go watch the series because well, I never we saw it. Well, we were watching it. We started watching it. And, what happened? Uh, <laughs> what happened? You well, because I, I like the show. Yeah. And sometimes. I never said I didn't oh. like it. We've been watching it. What are you talking about? Well, we, we started watching other stuff. So. <laughs> what did y'all watch after that? Or what did y'all watch? Well, we jump What's around. I jump around. I mean, I just don't always click on it because it's like politics throughout the all day, day. Yeah, it's like, I feel you. damn, like, I don't want to watch this too. I, I pretty much, I do... And I hate that I've become this. Money so gets so wound up when she realizes how deep in it she is. Yes, because I used to be like, oh, what cool fashion thing am I going to see today? Oh, did I see what this influencer did today? Wow, that bitch did that. You know, I'm all like, and now it's like, he's fucking what left. the fuck, mother? I'm sending They're you this stealing. DM. I'm sending him <laughs> this DM. I'm sending my other friends DMs. And I'm like, these motherfuckers. They're and you know, so now I catch myself. It's funny. Do you know that my phone told me, you know how it tells you the time? It told me um, the Did other day. The that it, <laughs> no, it said I went down by 43 percent being on my phone screen time really my screen time Holy that's shit. a lot of time we should do a competition on because like lowest screen time i've just i've just have said no more like wow. i cannot consume this every time but i do go to youtube so yeah. and i'll and it's <clears throat> i have my channels it's ben shapiro the hill candace owens like i'll see like who what is going on i don't i no longer do fox news unless it's like uh, what's the other guy's name? Hannity, Hannon? Tucker. Yeah, yeah Tucker. I'm kind of mad at him. Toting so that I, line right well, now. I'm not fucking with people, him right now. People mad at Tucker because he told y'all the truth. Like he basically said, from the stuff that I've seen, I haven't really seen nothing big enough, cheating wise, that would cause a state to say, "All right, Arizona, sorry, based on this bombshell evidence." We're going to have to overturn and overdo some That's shit. also like Bill Barr supposedly saying that, the uh, attorney general. And then people wrote the headline, you know, DOJ says not enough uh, investigation, you know, investigation or whatever shit has come out. And then you read it, and that's because they're not actually investigating it. They're not, the FBI and CIA are not investigating well, this. You think, okay, who's been investigating Trump for five years? They have. You think Trump's going to go to them for help? Exactly. That's why he no. has his own legal team. That's why he got his own lawyers. So when people I know that fucks with Chingo will post stuff like that headline of Bill Barr uh, saying oh, that. I know, I know probably who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and I'm like. Because they, t they insinuate that I don't read. Yeah. They insinuate that I don't read. But anybody can read as far as. It's gonna back their side, and then be like, "I'm, I read, I'm yeah. done." NPR just, NPR just told me, yeah. NPR, but we already know what, which way NPR leans. Yeah. Exactly, funded. By, they need yeah. to, they need to get defunded. Yeah. The, uh, the anyway, the Department of Justice isn't investigating any of this. So if you see those headlines, uh, that's uh, missing context, is what we call it. Exactly. So hey, you can insinuate that I don't read, but like Rob just told y'all, the department, the the whole. The narrative that William Barr is saying, like, nothing happened, that's not really what's being said. It's more like, we're not on the job. Yeah, that's it's, in layman's terms, that's exactly what mm -hmm. it is. What are we leaving these people with today, Django? Shit, man. That's so episode hard. eight. That's an hour and a half, 90 minutes I know, of gold. I'm about to go have some dinner with the kids. Um, okay, I'll just leave them with this. Follow me on social media. Um, I posted this thing. I made a little TikTok. Because I'm new to TikTok and I use the green screen thing. Oh, great TikTok, by the way. But a dude, you liked it? Yeah. So a, Were you eating and the, the lesson was going on, basically? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was so easy. Yeah. I was having lunch. Joe's back here editing. I went in for a break and I made a TikTok. So there's a dude that did a video about me. His, his TikTok name is like Alex Speaks Japanese, I think. Okay. So he does these little like nerdy type videos. And the one he did about me, it was like Mexican-American comedian and rapper Chingo Bling, you know, says he voted for Trump. Uh, he got attacked by uh, the cartoonist Lalo Al Alcaraz and this and that. And he says, 
do you have to vote for an old white man from Delaware to prove that you're Raza? And I was like, oh, this motherfucker hit the nail. So he did a video that says, if you've learned Mexican history, did you watch it, boo? Uh, no. Um, let me explain it. He says, if you've learned Mexican history in school, you've probably heard about the Aztecs. You probably heard about the Mayans. You probably heard about the Toltecs. Maybe even, you know, he named another one. He's like, but do you know that it wasn't the Spaniards coming in rolling deep with a bunch of soldiers taking out Aztecs and shit and took over Tenochtitlan like some Navy SEALs. He's like, no, it was only 3,000 of them. They were hella outnumbered. Yes, they brought disease, but they weren't military trained, most of them, according to him, right? He says the way they did it is they built alliances with nearby tribes. They had beef with, with the big tribe from Tenochtitlan. So basically, they got with this other tribe, I forget their name, they had. They were like, hell yeah, we tired of these motherfuckers coming in here and fucking with us. I got 80,000 soldiers right now to add to year three. Let's run up in there and make it do what it do. And that's exactly what happened. So it wasn't 3,000 Spaniards taking over a whole city. It was 3,000 Spaniards working with other indigenous Mexicans, if you will, to take out Mexicans. Mm -hmm. So they needed Mexicans to take out the Mexicans. Chingo warned y'all. <laughs> It was a good. It was a yeah. good. It was a good TikTok. I will say also before we go, uh, we didn't say it earlier, but you can go now and and be one of the first founding uh, members. We're looking to have five hundred founding members of the Red Pill Tamale Podcast to keep the podcast going, and also give you the bonus episode, which is two would would make two a week for you. And you can just go to Patreon and search Red Pill Tamales, and you'll find what the all do they get, Rob, if they um, were to join? Besides, obviously this. So you're gonna get the the bonus episode. So the one and then the two, which will only be exclusive to listeners. You'll have private access to basically. A Chingo or even Marisol through the uh, DMs on Patreon. I'll work on getting a, a message board of sorts up there so we can have conversations. And then uh, it's just an exclusive feed for patrons on posts and a comment section that's and only for dope. patrons. And it keeps the show going. So yeah. we need 500. <laughs> we yeah. need 500 people. Yeah. Um, you know, compared to the thousand negative comments, <laughs> I get. It uh, <laughs> should, shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> so yeah, if you enjoy the show, um, it's definitely going to be fan funded. Uh, so that we can bring you more show, better show, and keep it going. Cool. So, for sure. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Se la lavan y se toman agua.